this brings us to the last lecture of this uh, module. We'll talk about communication and communication flows. This, the figure on this slide displays the flow of communications and shows how it goes in multiple directions in an organizational hierarchy. Communication within the organization can flow up and down, it can flow sideways, it can even flow diagonal in many of many directions. This includes oral, written forms, and even uh, technology-enabled communications like email, chat, that sort of thing. Um, the success of the communication flows in organizations have a tremendous impact on the success of an organization. Um, technology, technology-enabled things, voicemails or asynchronous communications, um, video, that sort of thing, online newsletters, blogs have a great impact on how organizations communicate with one another. One of the things that organizations have is called an intranet, and that is a private internet, if you will, that allows people within an organization to communicate, but only with those who have access to the communication of protocols and passwords and the like for the internal system for that department. Internal or upward communication is um, managing your boss or managing your supervision, making sure they stay aware of what's going on. Uh, there's protocols associated with going around your boss to their supervisors when and, when and if that makes sense. Um, diagonally, when um, supervising, uh, being careful not to give, uh, give different direction to people that are reporting to a different individual. Um, those are diagonal kind of communication issues. Or if some other manager gives you directions, making sure that your manager knows that you're working with that other manager to get this work done. And then, of course, horizontal communication um, across work groups to make sure that information that's necessary for the job to get done is shared broadly. A Yammer is an example of, a, of one of the many different kinds of applications that are being used in organizations. Uh, with their internet, um, providing different uh, departments with their own uh, information sources, um, allows them to communicate across organizations and levels, uh, the flow of business activities, using social media and the like. Um, this is social. The Yammer happens to be a social network that companies use. Outside, you have things like LinkedIn and other types of uh, of, of activities that you can utilize. Upward communication uh, is a very important it's a formal type of channel. Uh, it's intentionally defined in organizations sometimes uh, when it makes sense to go over your boss's head. Boss isn't there. Who, who you should talk to is delegated oftentimes. Um, flows from lower level to higher level is important. Um, and sometimes there are specific channels that are put into place that allow communication up the, up the leadership hierarchy when there are problems. Um, typically, these were classified upward and downward, but increasingly there's matrix and other kinds of activities which we'll talk about in some future uh, videos. Uh, downward communication refer, refers to the uh, the flow of information and direction from the top to the bottom. It's when your boss comes in your office and says, do this, or we need to be working on this project. Um, it uh, typically involves providing clarity and direction in terms of tasks and objectives, and then feedback about performance, um, other sorts of details about the strategy and the goals of the organization. Um, essentially, downward or top-down communication uh, is the way many, many times the work that needs to be done is clarified and defined for individuals in the organization. Uh, upward communication, of course, balances this to make sure that as people are finding things out in the work groups, that the results in that that aren't necessarily aligned with the objectives, that those become information that higher level management can use in decision making. Horizontal communication involves the exchange of information among colleagues and peers in your work group, but also across work, work groups, across departments. Uh, horizontal information informs and supports, coordinates activities across departments. 
Uh, there's protocols and the like, sometimes minutes for meetings or reports are prepared and distributed for that purpose, written or oral reports, or social media can be used uh, for that kind of activity as well. Um, task force and project teams, uh, their, their success is, depends largely on how well that horizontal communication occurs within the team. And diagonal communication, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, this is when uh, companies, when they're downsizing or people are away from their jobs, sometimes communication across work groups from higher levels down or from lower levels up um, can cause uh, the, the need for that kind of activity. Uh, Self-managed work teams as well require uh, people to go for advice where they need it. Many work, workers require uh, information from different departments and they can go to senior managers as necessary. To do that, it can cause some confusion, so one has to be careful when implementing uh, digital or diagonal communication, uh, going around people or uh, going across the traditional structure can sometimes cause some challenges or difficulties. Besides the formal flows, there's also informal flows, sometimes called the grapevine, the rumor mill, if you will, uh, serendipitous communication or conversations that one has. Formal communications are important in organization and for the efficiency. Sometimes the culture is really built around informal communications. It can have a profound impact on the effectiveness of the organization. This can occur when different departments have meetings or, or uh, social activities or uh, just be by virtue of, of knowing what other people are working on, uh, communicating how the organization is doing and learning different types of uh, of obje objectives and maybe some future projects through a rumor mill, gossip mill, grapevine, that sort of thing. Uh, sometimes it can be negative, but at the same time, very much of the culture is often built upon these informal relationships that can become powerful and important. We also don't want to forget about uh, nonverbal communication. Um, these are uh, nonverbal cues such as uh, hand movements, head nodding, tone of voice. Uh, supportive facial expressions and the like. These indirect forms of communication can be in many times more informative than the direct message that's being transmitted in the words. So it's important to be aware of one's own nonverbal communication style and control to the extent that you can what messages you're sending nonverbally as well as verbally. Without effective communications, the activities and overall productivity of projects, groups, teams, etc., um, is diminished. Communication is a very important part of organizational success. One of the major issues of effective communications is getting feedback. In fact, one of the things that, dif that differentiates uh, effective leadership is what's called self-awareness, knowing that how people are responding to what you're saying and the direction that you're giving, your body language, and the like. So being aware of how things, how the projects are going and how people are reacting to you is a very important part, and that's where feedback comes in. That means receiving feedback on your own performance from your supervisors, but also your peers and your subordinates. But also uh, giving feedback, a constructive feedback, is a very necessary part of management. People don't necessarily know they're causing some problems in work groups, and it's important that you, figure, you learn how to give frank and, um, and direct criticism when it's warranted, but also one, uh, maintaining it being constructive so that it moves the organization forward and helps that individual develop. It allows individuals and the organization overall to identify its strengths and weaknesses and make adjustments that are needed. So strong feedback mechanisms are quite important um, when, uh, when moving forward, uh, also allowing people that are uh, voicing an opinion to complete their thoughts, not interrupting them. Um, that can be a very important uh, part of communication uh, as well, making sure that full messages get distributed. Uh, strong and effective communication uh, channels require that companies distribute information across levels of the organization, only hold information uh, secret if, it's got, if there's a strategic reason for that. Um, should be many, several different, many different channels of communication, face-to-face, -face, mail, memo, all of those kinds of things. Um, 
to make sure that information gets distributed to people that need it in order to get their jobs done. Uh, very important that it's two-way and that this feedback process occurs. One of the things you want to do when you're working in an organization is learn to receive feedback. Just because you think you know what you're doing doesn't mean other people are taking that message the way you expect them to. Learning how to make sure that what you're trying to accomplish is being received on the other end. And likewise, making sure that you, all, you uh, likewise get information from people about how you can improve your work and how then you can give them feedback about how they can, they can improve their work. To the extent you're able to develop skills in that area is uh, directly related to how successful you'll be in organizations going forward. All of this comes together to create what's called a learning organization where there's open communications between departments. This increases the level of learning among the employees and across the organization and therefore of the organization itself. The manager creating sustain and sustaining this kind of, of uh, organization invests in its employees by training them and providing minimal restrictions so that their cre creativity and their perspective can be used to further the objectives of the organization. And in this way, knowledge can be captured and shared among other people, relevant knowledge to the business. And people are encouraged to experiment with their ideas. They are allowed to make mistakes and learn from them. Um, managers encourage a healthy level of risk as long as that risk is uh, is managed and it's, you're aware of the risk and ready to accept failure and deal with it when it comes. It's valued as failure itself is valued as a learning experience. Um, and and uh, even though success is what's celebrated, failure likewise could lead to a much greater success in the future. It's seen as a it's seen as an experience that could provide a, a better uh, a better sense of how much the organization can achieve in the future and how it can go about doing that. So let's uh, meet in, online at Moodle and have a bit of a discussion about these topics. Uh, I'm going to ask you to identify four types of departmentalization like we talked about earlier. Um, provide some different forms of organizing structure and some of the advantages and disadvantages of each. Another question you could uh, answer and discuss is distinguish between centralization, decentralization, and what that might mean. And then lastly, uh, you could discuss uh, the spans of control, spans of management, why some organizations have narrow spans and others have wide spans. So that wraps up the, this uh, module, and uh, we'll see you in the next module. Uh, also, we'll see you online on Moodle in our discussion.